Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is my first venture into YouTubing, so there will be some bits that are going to be a bit rough, a bit awkward, and I apologise in advance for those. Um, please leave a comment below on things that I can do to improve, be it a setup issue or just me sort of not talking nonsense so much. Um, this video is an unboxing, um, and it is for, for one of the signature series, um, Harder and Steenbeck Infinities. Um, this is a cult, the Coulter Paint setup, so I'll go through it when I do the unboxing. But it was a Kickstarter that was run by the guys over at Cult Paint and Element Games um, last month, and I'm lucky enough that I received mine yesterday. Um, so I ordered a few other bits and bobs on the Kickstarter, um, which I'll I'll, do, I'll open up at the same time. So I think that's probably enough preamble and me me wittering. So on with the unboxing. So let's get started. Um, you can't beat a nice set of dice, so I, I did pick up a set of the dice. Uh, they're actually quite nice. You've got the cot paint symbol on the six, so and I'm sure these will go into a gaming bags at some point. Next up, you've got the maintenance kit. Now this apparently can, um, contains spare seals and bits and bobs for cleaning the airbrush. Um, apparently it was a really good value because it this isn't this isn't a specially branded one. This is just a bog standard harder and Steenbeck um, kit. Next up, I've got the Cotter Paint branded um, holder. Now this is actually really heavy. I wasn't expecting it to be quite the weight. Um, so actually, I can see this being used a bit more than I was expecting. You've then got the needle. Now this is a spare needle that is. Apparently, the version two. Now, this is something that um, the Cotter Paint um, airbrush is the first HS brush to actually have this in, but this is what HS are going to go to eventually as the stand, their standard needle. It's they invested in a brand new machine that apparently will get a much better um, dual taper on here. So, that's basically you get two little angles. Um, let's just open it up. You probably can't, it, the, the camera will not focus on that this very well at all. But um, dual taper means that you've got one angle there, and right at the tip, you've got a, another angle. Um, this is apparently re being polished as, as f good as they can actually get. Um, so I'll just pop that back so that it's nice and safe. I always think it's worth picking up a spare. And then you actually have the airbrush itself. So let's go on to opening this up. Just take a little cut through there because I'm sure that I'm going to mess something up when I actually open this up. So the bit we've all been waiting for. Here we go. That is a very nice looking airbrush. So here we go. That is really, really nice. That feels beautiful. So that is must be the cover. Yeah, there we go. So there we go. That does. So, so what have we got in here then? You've got the actual airbrush itself. You've got one of the again cult paint branded. Um, larger cups which in fairness is what I'm used to uh, my my regular airbrush is a iWater HPC plus and that's got the larger cup as well so in the spares you have I have no idea what the little bar is this is an alternative um, needle protector let's open this up That is a basically it's a forked needle protector, so it should protect the needle and um, allow you to get access to it to clean off when you get a dry tip. This, even though I've never used one before, is basically for I believe blowback. So when you're actually airbrushing, if you want to put some blowback through there, you can use that to perform the blowback rather than having to wedge your finger or a bit of a bit of paper. Um, this is a, a, a slimline cup, 
which you can then replace out with that. This is what they term, I believe, uh, um, an eye line cup or something like that. So that when you're airbrushing, you can actually see over it. Um, I've never really found anything like that useful. But here is the the main reason I went for the infinity. Um, basically, this, this is a, a stop. So as you can see, as you're pulling back, I can go all the way. If you dial this right the way down, you've only got a little bit of play on there. You can dial it right the way in, so there's hard, there is actually none on that. Now, the, the, there's two main things that are unique to this airbrush. Um, the trigger, as you can see, is not flat. Uh, let's angle it like that. You've got a curvature that fits your finger. Um, unlike a, a regular airbrush, which is completely flat. That this this trigger is unique to this airbrush. Um, I believe it will be available um, as a separate part. So you, if you've already got an H and S um, airbrush, you'll be able to buy one. Um, so you also on this one, you probably can see it better on the on the box. This is let's get that into the view. Apologies. This is number 23 out of 100. Now, I must be honest and say I wasn't expecting to get number 23. Um, when I put my bid in for um, my Infinity, I was actually number 86. Now, that's suggestive that a lot of people in the Kickstarter dropped out of the, 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 the first 100. So... But I was going to say, this is actually, I'm really impressed. This, um, I know, is the, uh, basically controls the tr the force behind the um, pullback. It's the actual resistance, that's the word I'm looking for. So you can crank that right the way in, have it quite tight, or you can have it out and you can have it slightly softer. Um, one of the things on the knee, on the, um, trigger that is much better than others is you've actually got a lot of play on this. Um, I don't know if you can see if I get the angle right. So you've got a lot more play on there. So you actually stand more of a chance of controlling your air through your finger. Um, the curvature is designed so that it's actually much more comfortable on your finger. So as, as you're airbrushing, you can um, you can actually do it for a longer session. Now, this is very interesting is you've actually got a quick release, uh, which I wasn't expecting. I don't I haven't got a good quality quick release system on my airbrush on my hose. Um, but taking it off, you can actually just switch it out for it and you just screw your hose on. Um, the last quick release system I had was actually a, a cheap Chinesey type one, and it, it, you could hear the air being released. Um, so here we go. You can see the actual. I'm not a fan of actually using um, needle protectors. I think if you're careful, um, you should be able to not damage uh, damage your needle. So it is phenomenally light. Um, this has actually got an aluminium, anodized aluminium body, and it actually feels a lot more robust than I was expecting. Um, a lot of anodized aluminium scratches as soon as you touch it. Um, this one clearly doesn't. So that's excellent. Right, I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just move some of this to one side. Um, pop the compressor on so I got a bit of air and then I'll give this a, a shoot through with some um, water. So I've connected this up now. Um, unfortunately one thing I have discovered is the fact that the thread on the Infinity is two or three mil shorter than the Iwata. What that means is the fact that going straight from my hose into onto the airbrush that it didn't connect properly at the bottom so you actually had some air seepage so the cheap chinese quick connect that i bought years ago i've connected up and actually this fits a lot better clearly it was 
um, the male side of things that wasn't that good. So the compressor hopefully has got a little bit of um, air in. Um, I've turned it off because I know it causes havoc with the microphone. This is just bog standard water and we'll see how we go. I can already see what one of the criticisms of the um, 0.4 needle is. Um, a lot of people basically said that, oh, it puts out too much paint. I can see exactly what they mean because it requires so, li so little, um, yeah, it requires so little pullback on the trigger to actually get any out. However, I think with being able to control that air on the trigger, that actually makes a huge amount of difference. I don't know whether you can actually see, obviously I've got a bit of runny uh, water there, and it will obviously go, it will be obviously a lot different when you're running through paint. But yeah, I can see, I think you'll have to relearn how to use it. Um, currently, on most airbrushes, you just do that. You just whack the, tri the, the trigger down to get your air through. Because you've got s so much more play on this, you're going to have to teach your finger how to actually work again. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so, but yeah, no, I, I could say impressed, I think, is probably... A, a good way of putting it. So the last bit of the um, unboxing. This is the paint stand. Um, it should be £25 and I think the Kickstarter did it for £17. It's actually a really nice stand. Um, it's all branded up and everything. What I'm impressed about is how solid that is. That is really, really substantial. Um, the airbrush just slots in like that. Um, as a word of warning, if you think, oh, I must pick one of those up and you've got a different type of airbrush, not all airbrushes will fit. Um, this is my HPC. As you can see, it just doesn't. Um, there's no neck on the, the holder, uh, sorry, the paint cup, which is the reason why. Um, I would say one gripe, and it doesn't affect me, but this is a right-handed um, holder. If you look at where the slot is, if you were left-handed and you wanted to use it over here, it won't rotate round. There's no, there's no extra. So, I'd like say for me it's not a problem, and I would say probably at least eighty percent of um, airbrushers will be using it right-handed. But just what, might want to think about that before you um, pick one up. Um, I still prefer when I'm actually airbrushing at on my desk. I actually um, still prefer the one that clamps onto the side of the test. It will take two airbrushes, and I know if I hit it, I'm not. There's no way, as heavy as this is, I know if I've got something clamped to the desk, it's not going to go for Burton at all. Next up was the little maintenance kit. Now this comes in a in a really funky little pouch. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of the this is, other than the fact it's black. So I suppose if you're dismantling stuff, you actually can see what you're dismantling. It comes with, in essence, four interdental brushes. That's the best way of putting it. Now, I will say that I haven't actually found one as fine as this to buy. The, the key bit isn't the um, bristles. It's this, the wire. This one's obviously a bigger one that's tapered and such like. You've then got, in the little pack of, of gubbins, you've got another um, blowback cup. You've got your spare PTFE washers. Like I say, the blowback cup. And then you have two tools. One of which I have not got a Scooby-Doo uh, what it is. I'm guessing it's it. that is the same size as the needle. So it may be to if you, in case you've got um, a blockage or something like that. This um, is a reamer. 
Um, basically, what you do, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it is designed to go into the back of the nozzle and you gently can use it to scrape away because it's kind of almost bladed. Um, you use it to gently scrape away um, paint detritus in the nozzle. You have to be really careful because nozzles are delicate and you will scratch it if you're not careful. Your best bet, if you are, do, if you are going to use one of these, top tip, make sure that you've soaked the nozzle in something like some Vallejo um, airbrush thinner before you put this in. So at least there's a little bit of lubrication there. Um, and just go gently, don't don't sort of just ram it in and kind of, otherwise you'll be buying, buying new, um, having to buy a new nozzle. So put these back in here and these bits. And that I think is the actual unboxing pretty much done. So that's the first video done. Um, hopefully it wasn't too awkward or jilted or anything like that. Like I say, it is my first one, so please be gentle, but I really would like some um, comments on what people thought about it. Um, obviously this is a Kickstarter that's now over. Uh, the airbrush isn't available for general purchase yet. Um, it will be at some point. Um, the Kickstarter was had a super quick turnaround. Um, I think the actual Kickstarter was only three weeks long and within four or five weeks I've actually got the airbrush in my hand which is epic. Um, I do feel it was more of a pre-order system than a Kickstarter, you know there weren't stretch goals and things like that but actually that's probably a minor gripe. Um, value for money is always going to be a question. I I wouldn't have put the money in if I hadn't been happy. Um, clearly a lot of people change their minds. The fact I've got number 23 um, of the limited edition rather than 86 as I thought I was going to get means that there were quite a few people that went, hang on a minute, I can get, if I picked up a standard Infinity, yeah, the, the trigger's good, but I'm, I don't, I'm not prepared to pay for it, or the, the new needle's good, but I can get it later on. Um, be really interested to hear why some people did drop out. Um, I do like the new airbrush. I'm going to have to sit down and spend a bit of time and, and just rattle through some actual models. Um, I didn't want to do that on um, camera because there, there is always a bit of experimentation and, and you know, you, it, it, I think it's a bit awkward. Um, so hopefully the video's okay. I'll wrap this up now, I think. Um, like I say, please leave some comments. Hopefully I'll be doing some more of these. Um, hopefully the quality of the camera on the um, paint area was good enough because I'd like to do some paint tutorials as well. Uh, a few a few of my friends have been saying, you know, they'd, they'd quite like some tutorials for doing that, uh, doing various bits and bobs. So um, thank you very much for um, spending the time to get to this end point.